Auf die Blitze. Fertig. Who am I kidding? <coughs> Anybody who knows anything about running will know already that I've never done any competition running. I've never done any running of any kind at all, in fact. And that's why somebody like me in this situation becomes instantly aware of these. The spikes dig into the ground, which is odd for a start. And as you push, they give you very much more impetus than normal shoes do. Of course, to a trained athlete, these running shoes are vital. And anybody who can improve on them is going to do him a favor, which is precisely what a large German chemical company here in Ludwigshafen on the Rhine is trying to do. Together with a shoe manufacturer, they've been working on the problem now for about a year and a half. And this is what they've come up with. A shoe with studs made of nylon and glass reinforcing instead of spikes, and the same material used for the sole. Hopefully the new shoe will receive official approval in time for the Munich Olympics in August. Now designing and testing the shoe was done with the help of this rather odd looking machine here. An electric motor drives a system of cogs and pistons which move these metal legs in exactly the same way as the muscles in the human body do. It's a kind of mechanical athlete, and it works like this. The problem they were trying to look here was one which was created when spikes were invented back in the 30s in the first place. To a non-runner like me, spikes just help you to push yourself better along. But to a trained athlete, the fact that they break the surface of the track means that he loses a tiny amount of energy on every step, getting them into the track and pulling them back out again. And of course, if anybody gets in the way of them, they can also be dangerous. The great advantage of the new stud is that it's safe. And since it doesn't break the surface of the track anywhere near the same extent as the spike does, it saves the runner an amount of energy, a small amount it's true, but enough to matter, on every single step. Now, that of course only happens when the material from which the track is made is such that it permits the studs to work with maximum efficiency. And that's why down here, there are two metal frames, each one of which holds a piece of artificial track. The gear mechanism running the tracks down here is connected to the leg mechanism so that as each foot comes down, the track, so to speak, goes past at the same speed as it would in real life. Now, there are various kinds of artificial track in use, and of course, they've all been tested together with the shoe. That part is relatively easy. But what is much more variable is the way in which the shoe will be used under real conditions. You see, a 10,000 meter runner does about 60 double steps every minute, whereas a 1,000 meter runner will do anything up to 144. So for that reason, the speed of these mechanical legs can also be varied. Now, their research has also shown that loading or pressure on the shoe varies according to different situations. And so, in here, in the leg, a spring like this is adjusted to vary that pressure anywhere from zero pounds when the leg is in the air to a maximum of 400 pounds when really heavy pressure, heavy pressure is being put on. At the end of every test, which can run up to the equivalent of 300 miles, both the sole and the track are examined microscopically for signs of wear and tear. And the results of these tests so far make the people here very confident that the shoe works. So if the International Amateur Athletics Federation agrees, and they're a very particular body, then we may well see the shoe in operation at the Munich Olympics. And for anybody wearing it, that could mean the difference between getting a medal or not. The few hundredths of a second that this shoe might save you doesn't mean very much to the man in the street but it means a great deal if you're driving yourself all out towards the finishing line.